The Lord our God is Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory, Hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory, Hallelujah. He's holy, holy is the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Holy, holy is the Lord, the Lord our God. Holy, holy is the Lord. The Lord Almighty, holy, holy is the Lord. The Lord our God is Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Hallelujah is Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Hallelujah, because he's King of kings and Lord of lords, glory. Hallelujah, you're King of kings and Lord of lords, glory. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Prince of Peace, Glory, Hallelujah, oh, Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory, Hallelujah, is holy, holy is the Lord, the Lord Almighty, holy, holy is the Lord, the Lord our God, holy, holy is the Lord, the Lord Almighty, holy, holy is the Lord. The Lord our God, He's Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory, Hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory, Hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory, Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory, Hallelujah. Holy. Holy is the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Holy, holy is the Lord, the Lord our God. Holy, holy is the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Holy, holy is the Lord, the Lord our God. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Hallelujah. Ha, Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Hallelujah. Ora sataze te pia shalabatu bea. Kera sia vada su. Hala desta da basakara bos peresia. Zara sia para tu. Kera mana mantes sere de ataro stele. Zara desa para nem bos tero. Chile se da beca se tu zara. Vala vene mene dosta da desta da besta. Rabaca ti arro. Handela besti paro. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus is the Lord. Ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, he's king forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he redeemed us with his blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he redeemed us with his blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He redeemed us with his blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bimba ba si kete ayan. Kere ba stand de la vina si ava la ke si ejan ba ba la ya ba da sura. Kere ba nja si e bete kai ya ma nan ba ba la ya sa ya ma mbara yora. Vele vero sok ti sa hok si ra. Ava la ma de ro bo. It is I am bachi yere biki abo bibi di le rabo ya. In spirit and truth, the earth, the doors, and the world now bows before the Lord. Jesus Christ, the King of kings, is glory forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He redeemed us with his blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He redeemed us with his blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Christ Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He redeemed us with his blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He redeemed us with his blood. Holy, 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 holy. Christ Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ Jesus is the Lord. Jesus, hallelujah, name above every name. Christ Jesus, 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 Name above every name, Christ Jesus. 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 Name above every name. Christ Jesus, name above every name. Christ Jesus, name above every name. And my knees I bow with my tongue confess. Jesus Christ, my righteousness. With my knees I bow, my tongue confess. Jesus Christ, my righteousness. A name above every name. Jesus, name above every name. Jesus, name above every name. Jesus, name above every name. With my knees I bow and my tongue confess. Jesus Christ, my righteousness. With my knees I bow and my tongue confess. Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. Oh, with my knees I bow and my tongue confess. Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. Oh, Jesus, name above every name. Jesus, name above every name. Oh, Jesus, name above every name. Oh, God, Jesus, name above every name. Oh, God, oh, Jesus, name above every name. Oh, Jesus, name above every name. With my knees I bow and my tongue confess. Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. With my knees I bow and my tongue confess. Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. 
Jesus name above every name. Jesus name above every day. Ah, oh, Jesus name above every day. Ah, oh, Jesus name above every day. With my knees I bow and my tongue confess, Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. With my knees I bow and my tongue confess, Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. Jesus, name above every name. Oh, Jesus, name above every name. Oh, Jesus, name above every name. Oh, Jesus, name above every name. Jesus, who has all authority, Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. Oh, Jesus, who has all authority, Jesus, Lord of glory. With my knees I bow and my tongue confess, Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. With my knees I bow and my tongue confess, Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. Jesus' name above all names. Jesus' name, Lord of all creation. Jesus' name above every name. Jesus, Lord of all creation. Jesus' name above every name. Jesus, Lord of all creation. Oh, God. Jesus' name above every name. Jesus, Lord of all creation. Oh, Jesus' name above every name. Jesus, Lord of our creation. My knees are bow and my tongue confesses. Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. With my knees I bow and my tongue confess, Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. Jesus, name above every name. Jesus, Lord of all creation. Jesus, name above every name. Jesus, Lord of all creation. All authority in heaven and in earth now. Jesus, name above all names. 
all authority in heaven and earth now. Jesus' name above every name. All authority in heaven and earth now. Jesus, Lord of all creation. Name above every name that's given. Jesus, Lord of all creation, all authority in heaven and earth now. Jesus, Lord of all creation, all authority in heaven and earth now. Jesus, Lord of all creation. Jesus, name above every name now. Jesus, Lord above every name now. My, with my knees I bow. And my tongue confess, Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. You know, my biggest desire is to be able to share with people how wonderful it is to worship the Lord by the Holy Ghost from the depths of your heart, where you don't have to think about the words. Actually, where your heart declares the words and it's almost like the, your heart declares the words and the words declares them into your heart and it just keeps going deeper to the place where you can't even stand anymore. I've never seen anybody worship in the Bible and worship in spirit and truth and ultimately come to a place where they couldn't stand anymore. That's, they, they, you see in that place of deeper beholding him, deeper encounter with him, and I say deeper, I, I would just simply say more fully encountering him. And there's a depth, there's a depth to our there, there's a depth to our heart and our soul that results in a more in a more complete and full encounter with him. The deeper you'll go in your heart, the deeper you'll go into that place and that realm where you'll be able to see him in a greater way and as we begin as we begin to sing this some some people some people are just still over where they're at in the earthly realm with cares and burdens and sorrows and uncertainties and somewhat aloof from really the reality of heaven because the reality of earth is far more impacting you know things around you in your circumstances of life can actually even come and be forceful and grab you by the throat, as it were, and tell you that you must obey. Like finances, for example, that one really gets people a lot. You know, there's a whole list of emotional things that go on in people's life. But there's a place where you can go apart from all of that and you can come apart into a solitary place. Solitary place is a place where you're alone. You're alone with Him. Hallelujah. Jesus was constantly going into a solitary place where He was well alone with the Father. And if there's anything that we want to be able to help people understand, if there's anything that's going to make a difference, if there's any way to bust out of religion into relationship, is somehow people are going to have to be willing to be taught of the Holy Spirit how to come into a solitary place of worship and praise, no matter where you're at, whether you're in the church place, whether you're in your car driving down the road, whether you're sitting at your table at breakfast, whether you're in your living room on the couch and your bedroom on the bed. It doesn't matter. There's a place alone with God. A place where the Spirit of the Lord will move you so deeply. A place, place where God the Holy Spirit will begin to speak through you. And, and, and usually it would begin, especially for those who've stepped over into a place where God has, they've allowed God the Holy Spirit to baptize them in His presence, in His, Holy, in His presence of holiness, or baptize them in the Holy Ghost. A place where the song and the, and the worship begins to Flow out, maybe like a wellspring at first. 
Now, surely is not a dry and thirsty land. Surely is not a dry and thirsty land. Surely, surely not a wilderness. Surely not a place abandoned of his presence, abandoned of his life, a place absent of his rivers, a place absence of his water that flows from on high. That wellspring begins to spring up on the inside, something that goes beyond you, beyond the emotions that you've known since childhood, beyond the influences of things that have made you happy or made you sad, that have made you feel good or made you feel bad, an influence that is supernatural, an emotion that belongs to his glory realm, a joy that is in his presence, a pleasure that is only found at his right hand. Oh, there's a place where God's people can come and live. There's a place called Beulah. There's a place where God has called us into that realm of Zion, Canaan's happy land. A place where the grapes are growing, where the rivers are flowing, where the goodness of God can be understood. A heavenly realm that we don't have to wait to experience when we die and go over yonder, a place where we don't have to wait until the millennial reign of Christ begins or until that earth, that wonderful new heaven, that new earth is formed. A place and access that we now have. Everyone who's born of the Spirit has this access. I believe that many people have been born of the Spirit. And what happened was they were imprisoned by religion. And religion brings such a self-justification. Self-justification is just nothing more than self-righteousness. Ah, uh, but there is a place where you can be liberated no matter where you're at. God gives men, mankind a lifetime to get it right. Gives men a lifetime to repent. As the psalmist said, how can an old man cleanse his, the, the sins of his youth? And the answer is there by taking heed unto the word of the Lord. To simply begin to obey God. To simply begin to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Oh, God says above everything, go after the kingdom and go after his righteousness. And when you do, what you're doing is you're going after laying a hold on this intimacy. You're laying a hold on something very tangible. It can only be defined and expressed in terms of relationship. It can't be defined and expressed in terms of anything else. Not in terms of knowledge. Not in terms of deeds. Not in terms of action. Within the framework of what men would count worthy of mitzvah or worthy of those things that, that might be, be tallied by man or quantitated by man as good. Oh, but the Father's calling us to a place of relationship with Him where when we begin to sing Jesus' name above every name, Jesus, Lord of all creation, it captivates our being, our inner being. The sound of our voice is irrelevant. The actions or the attitudes of all the things that people have impressed upon us or tried to impose upon us, irrelevant. Our condition, our situation, irrelevant. Doesn't even matter. Can't even be seen anymore. Not even thought of. Irrelevant. Because suddenly our heart, our spirit, our emotions, our will, all our beings being drawn into a place of what is truly real. <laughs> being drawn to a place of adoring the one who has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light for the one single purpose of showing forth his praises. To begin to have these well springs, these rivers, these streams that make glad the city of God as thanksgiving begins to flow. <laughs> Somebody said, I don't know the words. You just need to be taught of God. You need to be born of the Spirit and you'll know the words. <laughs> It ain't even about the words, it's about the heart. But the words become magnificently displayed by the Holy Ghost as we begin to obey Him. Oh, I just want God's people to come to know that they don't have to live in a wilderness, desert, dry, thirsty land anymore. That there is an inheritance that's been given them. Uh, a thing that, that, that be go, goes beyond who you are and the significance by which you placed upon yourself. People are always evaluating, looking upon their self and looking upon the things that they have. They're always looking at whether or not they have a position or whether they recognize or whether they are value or meaning as defined by other people. That is just simply a testimony of not knowing him the way that he's purposed for us to know him because he would fill us up with all the value and all the meaning that we need. It doesn't matter anymore. All we are for is to worship him. 
Uh, we are for is to praise, and we don't even we don't need to do nothing, for we are complete. When you're complete, you're done, you're finished, you're fulfilled. You don't need any more approval. You don't need any more validations. You, and when you don't need any more approvals, you don't need any more invalida validations, you're no longer going to be intimidated. You're not going to longer be searching around trying to find some purpose, some meaning, some value, somebody to tell you that you're okay. Jesus, name above every name. Jesus, name above every name. With my knees I bow and my tongue confesses, Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. With my knees I bow and my tongue confess, Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. Jesus' name above every name. Jesus' name above every name. Jesus' name above every name. Oh, Jesus' name above every name. Oh, Jesus, Lord of all creation, all authority in heaven and earth. Jesus, Lord of all creation, all authority in heaven and earth. With my knees I bow and my tongue confess, Jesus, Lord, my righteousness. Hallelujah. 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 will say, Hallelujah. Karamandam brevelu. Hallelujah. Zera la ba potore, zera de malanda prosu. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia to the King. Oh, alleluia, alleluia to the King. Christ Jesus, Lord of all. Christ Jesus, King of kings. Christ Jesus, Lord, forever reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah to Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in heaven and in earth. Hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns over. Hallelujah, 
Christ Jesus reigns. Oh, in heaven and in earth, Christ Jesus reigns. Oh, in heaven and in earth, Christ Jesus reigns. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. He reigns over me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns over me. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns over me. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. 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 Christ Jesus reigns. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns over me. Hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. 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 Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns over me. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. He now reigns in heaven and earth, and I'm a part of that realm. He's given me this grace. In him alone is found Christ Jesus. He's the Lord. He's the Lord forevermore. And I'll worship the King of kings. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. He reigns over me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Christ Jesus reigns over me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns, he reigns over me. One more time, hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Christ Jesus reigns over me. That should make you feel it really good. Hallelujah. 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 Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Christ Jesus reigns over me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Christ Jesus reigns over me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Christ Jesus reigns over me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ Jesus reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Christ Jesus reigns over me. He is exalted, he is exalted, and he's glorified. Christ Jesus who reigns over me. He's exalted, he's exalted, oh glorified, Christ Jesus who reigns over me. He's exalted, he's exalted, he's glorified, Christ Jesus who reigns over me. He's exalted, he's exalted, he's glorified, Christ Jesus who reigns over me. I want you to sing it. He's exalted, he's exalted, he's glorified. Christ Jesus, who reigns over me. He's exalted, he's exalted, he's glorified. Christ Jesus, who reigns over me. Do it again. He's exalted, he's exalted, he's glorified. Christ Jesus, who reigns over me. Oh, he's exalted, he's exalted, he's glorified. Christ Jesus, who reigns over me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We, it's an awesome thing that we get to do that, hey? Master Kerry and I say, it's an awesome thing that we get to do that, huh? He is exalted, he's exalted, he's glorified. Christ Jesus, he reigns over me. Oh, he's exalted, he's exalted, he's glorified. Christ Jesus, who reigns over me. Oh, he's exalted, he's exalted, he's glorified. Christ Jesus, who reigns over me. Oh, he's exalted, he's exalted, oh, he's glorified. Christ Jesus, who reigns over me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ Jesus reigns. Christ Jesus, he reigns over me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's glorified. Christ Jesus, who reigns over me. Oh, he's exalted. He's exalted. And he's glorified. Christ Jesus, who reigns over me. Oh, he's exalted. He's exalted. He's glorified. Christ Jesus, who reigns over me. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Well, you can be seated. We're just trying to get you to some place where you can hear the Word of God when it goes forth. Because if you can hear the Word of God when it goes forth and your ground's ready, it's going to spring out and bear fruit. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you now you take a hold of our lives and you govern every thought and every action and every deed. The conduct of our ways. Lord, the thoughts and the influences of our life. Father, may we be able to look past all of the things that would bother us as individuals and start flowing and operating in your compassion and in your love so a greater manifestation of your glory may be seen. Father, you alone know what it's going to take to bring the change that is absolutely, close your eyes, is absolutely essential for us to be able to touch heaven and participate with your will. Lokul shikarame in the apayala sutta. You alone, oh God. You alone, oh Father, understand the dimensions of the things that we're having to deal with in this time period, these last days, when, you've ex when you're in expectation that those who know you should do exploits. And yet we see very few exploits taking place. So, Lord, we come to you today. We ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the things which hinder, oh God, the things which have held back your people, from knowing the very first basics of growing in relationship with you, growing in responsibility and accountability to your will and your purposes when it comes to walking after the Spirit. For, Lord, you see that we've been very responsible with earthly things. Father, you see that we've been very responsible with our education. We've been very responsible, oh God, with our occupations. We've been very responsible with our finances. We've been very responsible to make our mortgage payments and our rent payments and to take care of our food for our earthly needs and the things that we have valued and put a lot of interest in based upon the time that we spend. Lord, we ask you to show us how to make a shift so that you may begin to be exalted in our life instead of us exalting other things. Lord, that we would begin to exalt you. Father, I don't know how it is, Lord, but you've, uh, you've brought all of these people with a lot of education here into my life and into your church here. You brought a lot of people that have given themselves to many things and accomplishments in this realm of this world. And Father, we know that not many mighty are called, oh God, not many, not, not, not many with earthly ability are chosen. But Father, we know that if we should find a place in you to set apart ourselves unto you, to, to lay aside the things that we hold so dear and hold so valuable and hold so meaningful in terms of its definitions to us and how it value it brings to us, we could just lay it all aside and have only one value and have only one definition and have only one meaning for our life and that being in you and what you've done for us. Then truly, Lord, we would lay hold on the realms of the Spirit. Ha. Then truly, oh God, then we would lay hold on the realms that only it seems that just a few ignorant men, people with just maybe second, third, fourth grade educations who had no value or meaning in life, people who, as Catherine Coleman said, I have nothing, I, I, I cannot sing, I have no looks, I have nothing pleasing after the natural, I don't have finances or money, I don't have intellect, but all that I have I give to you, Lord Jesus. And she made you, and as she did, so did many others just made you the whole meaning and value of their purpose of their life. They didn't seek after other things to give them meaning and value and definition, but sought you alone. For that meaning and that value and that definition for that purpose. And Lord, we know in so doing, God, all that who sought you so begin to, to minister according as you've described. Huh. They be, you began to be revealed through them. Oh God, I pray today that every person in this place will come to the revelation, knowledge, that you, Christ Jesus, are in us. And that you so desire to be revealed through us. If we should lay aside all our earthly care and pursuit. Should we no longer allow the cares of this life to choke us. And keep us from bearing forth this fruit. Oh God should we no longer be shallow. Hard and shallow rocky ground. Just shallow 
in our hearing, shallow in our relationship, then no more can the fowls of the air sweep down and eat up the seed of your word before it takes root. No longer would persecution be able to sway us from the purposes that you called us to walk in and live in. Father, no longer would we, no longer would we rely upon our own understanding for no man knows anything as he ought. Oh God, but we would then begin to rely upon you, Holy Spirit, for your knowledge that you give, for your revelation that you bring, for your instruction, oh God, that would daily teach us and lead us into a deeper realm, hallelujah, of knowing you. Father, I pray today that each person's heart would be set not on other things, but the thing, knowing you. Father, I pray, oh God, I know it doesn't take many. You've never had many. You've only had a few. Oh God, I know that it only takes a few to be shaken with a mighty wind. To be shaken with a mighty rushing wind. It only takes a few to be shaken with your power and with your glory, with your presence. I only know, God, that it takes just a few to be baptized in your fire. And then everything changes. We leave our occupations. We leave those things that we hold dear and hold value. We take that which we have and we lay it at the apostles' feet so that the purposes of the kingdom may be advanced. No longer do we hold tightly unto ourselves and unto our lives and to our purpose and deserves. And then things begin to change. Father, today, Father, today, Whatever a person has in their hand, I pray it becomes a miracle tool. Father, today, those who are pursuing things in, in their vocation, Father, I pray today a revelation would come to them that now their vocation has to be completely consecrated to the Lord. Otherwise, they have to get a new vocation. Oh, God, those, oh, Lord, who are relying upon their education and, 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 and the, the things that they're doing in school, that suddenly it would become consecrated to you, oh, God, and its whole value will be in the kingdom and have nothing to do with their own purpose, with their own fame or own interest. Let it be proven. Hallelujah. Oh God, that in every dimension is depending upon you, counting upon you, relying upon you. And if there's any here today, oh God, that you would search their hearts and they would find out that what they're doing is for their own selves. It's for their own career. It's for their own interests. It's for their own house. For their own land. It's for their own fame, their own fortune. Then Lord, we pray today in Jesus' name, they would cast that beggarly garment aside those rags of emptiness and valuelessness aside and begin to take up this cross this glory this realm of heaven oh prove us oh god come and try us and prove us oh god i pray let your fire prove us today oh god i pray in jesus name for lord you see that we in peril Oh God, you see the, as it were, that the light is about to go out. Though God, we know that there is a day, time coming when it will be, there will be no light. It will only be darkness. And in that time, no man can work. We know, Father, that we approach that time where no man can work. But Lord, right now we see this wonderful privilege and this opportunity, these last few moments of time where the light of the gospel shines bright. Oh God, that the light of the gospel of signs and wonders and miracles, the light of the gospel of resurrection life, the light of the gospel of power and authority over all devils and sickness and disease may begin to spring forth because there are those who have become so, so intimate with you, who have entered into such a deep relationship with you that they are even one, one, one in motion, one in thought, one in purpose, one in heart, one in action, one in deed, one in value, one in meaning. That everything that we know and everything that we believe and everything that we have comes as a direct result of you instructing us and teaching us. Comes as a direct result of you leading us because you live on the inside of us. Thank you for the revelation today. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Well, Jesus is wonderful, isn't he? Yes. 
He'd almost have a couple of weak amens, a couple of one or two yes he is. is. Come on now. That is an opportunity for you to really express your love for him in a very ardent fashion. Hallelujah. I didn't say how many of you want a million dollars. I'm afraid that it would have got my, possibly might have gotten a much bigger response. Are you listening to me now? Are you listening to me? I want to move you deep into your, deep into an examination. Prove that Christ is in you. A deep into an examination of a oneness with the Holy Spirit where not your spirit, where your spirit is no longer ruling you. I want to evaluate you. I'm here to examine you. I'm here to test you. I'm here to prove you, says the Lord. I'm here to find out whether or not your spirit is in charge or the Holy Spirit is in charge. Is it your, it does not matter your doctrine. It does not matter how much you know, your ideologies. It doesn't matter your Christian philosophy. What matters is the proof of your relationship, the proof and the value of whether or not God reigns over you. Christ Jesus is here to reign. And it's a good place to start saying he is Lord, he is ruler. That is the beginning to say that Jesus is ruler. He's sovereign, he reigns over me. This is it. This is, this is the proof of the new birth to say he's my ruler, he rules over me. Then there is the evidence, the proof of a change, of a transformation. I'm telling you right now, you are on trial today. You're on trial. I'm on trial what you don't realize is you're constantly on trial. I want you to open your Bibles to John chapter 6 and verse 6. And I'm going to show you how you're on trial. It's not like somebody is hiring you and say, we're hiring you on trial. It's like you're in the courtroom of life and you're being examined by the author of life, by the prince of life. And he's given you everything that you have need of to be able to walk in this life, in the ways of this life. He's given you an abundant life. He's given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. And he's come to prove you. I tell you, 2020 vision can be seen in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 20. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 20 is a great day and opportunity when God with an audible voice came and spoke to all of Israel. He came there to put them on trial. He came there to prove them. He came there to test them, to see what would happen, to see if they would be willing to have his fear always before their eyes so that they would not sin. That's 2020 vision. That's what it's about. God put Abraham on trial. God put Abraham on trial and said, go now and do something that goes beyond all that you can think, all that you can calculate. And the only thing that resulted in Abraham's success is that he was willing to, no matter what, to simply consecrate himself to absolutely obeying the word of God. It was the only way that he passed the trial. He resolved himself. He consecrated himself to only obeying God. No matter what his mind said, no matter what his thinking realm said, no matter what his ideology said, no matter what his concepts of God were, no matter what his philosophy was, he consecrated himself to absolutely obeying the word of God. Philip was one of the, you're looking at John 6, verse 6. Philip was one of the first people that Jesus, actually Philip was the first person that Jesus himself went and found and called in Galilee. And of course we know that as soon as he returned from the wilderness, having been tempted of the devil for 40 days and for 40 nights, that he was passing by John and John said, there he is. There's the lamb. There's your lamb. <laughs> Here's my lamb. <laughs> Hallelujah. I see my lamb. There goes my lamb. There's your lamb. There's there given to take away the sins of the world, to take away your sins. And immediately Andrew and John followed him. Jesus turned back and looked at him and said, what do you want? What do you want from me? And I'm pretty sure he said it like that. What do you want? Because you know why I've had the Holy Ghost talk to me? I know his demeanor. I know the examination is scary. If, you, if there's any sincerity, you're going to bow out. What do you want? They, they said, we're rabbi, teacher, master. Where, where are you staying? Where are you living? We want to, we'd like to hang out with you, basically. He said, come see. 
Then the next day he goes into Galilee, uh, Bethsaida, the home of Andrew and Peter and James and John. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wouldn't doubt that it was either John or Andrew that got, grabbed a hold of Jesus first. John doesn't tell you. You know, the Gospel of John, for the most part, leaves out or really only writes about what all the rest of the, those in the Gospels didn't write about. In other words, he writes about what Matthew didn't write about, what Mark didn't write about, what Luke didn't write about. For the most part, that's the way he, that's the way he ministered. He was, just, he, was, he was the editor. He was filling in the blanks, as it were, compiling it all. Under the mandate and the authority of Jesus. It is an amazing thing to come to know who you are in God. It's an amazing thing to have an opportunity to move in God, to be used by God. Hallelujah. Today I pray that you discover your, your purpose in God. Today I, 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 just, I pray you discover that God's got something for you that's bigger than what you've imagined. It's bigger than what you've purposed for your life. Most people are so far from that, it's so aloof to them. It's so abstract. Everything from birth has been taught about, you know, what you can do, what you can have, and what you can gain, and who you are, and what people think about you, and the meaning that people put upon you, and that you put upon yourself. And then that gets amplified and distorted, and all the competition, and all the stuff that you've involved yourself in. Oh, but what happens when you all of a sudden... You step into your value and your meaning in God. The Father has come in His love and grace, given us a free gift so that we could know this meaning and value in Him. And yet we see it, and many people religiously look at it, go, wow, that's good, and then turn right back to going, doing whatever it is that they were doing before Jesus ever found them. They look at Him and say, oh, yeah, well, that's good. You know, everybody needs a little bit of religion in their life. And they just go right back to whatever it was that already captivated them, their interest. We see it with the disciples. See it? They, they didn't really get the big picture. They were happy to follow Jesus and move with him as long as he was on the earth. As long as he was, they were traveling around with him and beholding the miracles that he was doing. At least they were a cut above everybody else. They were willing to follow him. But just as soon as their hopes were dashed, as soon as all, all the things that they thought were true and thought that were right, they immediately went back to their occupation. They went back to doing what they were doing before Jesus ever found them. They forgot that he said, come follow me, I'm going to make you fishers of men. They forgot that he had said, listen, you've got to lose your life because unless you lose your life, take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy. I mean, they forgot it all. They forgot. Philip was one of the first people, one of the first persons. That Jesus himself went and handpicked. And he said to Philip, finding Philip, he said, come and follow me. He said, Philip was there from the very beginning. He watched as Jesus turn the water into wine. He watched all the miracles, the great miracles of provision that had already happened up to this point in time. Because he's been, this, is, this point in time is right into this, literally into the second year of Jesus' ministry. So... If you look at the whole story in all the Gospels, because this story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 with a few barley loaves and a few fishes is one found in all four of the Gospels. And so I want to kind of lay it out for you like this. I just talk from Mark chapter 6 and, and, you know, and kind of blend it all. You just stay in John chapter 6, verse 6. It's evening time. It's about evening time. Jesus had a great company of people there. And, of course... We know that he's been there. It's been almost now three days that he's there. And um, everybody that came, no matter what their problem was, they were being healed. If they were blind, they see. If they were deaf, they heard. If they were crippled, they walk. Huh? If they were diseased, the disease was cleansed. If they had devils, devils went out of them. If they maimed, in other words, they had an arm cut off, leg cut off, something was miss missing. And, of course, leprosy at the time... Leprosy would take your ears out, take your fingers off, take your nose off. So God was doing these great miracles. And the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, it's now evening. Send them, the, send them away so they can go buy some food. The Lord's not interested in sending anybody away so that they can go take care of their food. He said, don't think about what you eat. Seek me. Seek first the kingdom of God. 
and I'll take care of you. He's not, he didn't, they already heard that message, but uh, it was just a message. It was, oh, how beautiful does he speak when he speaks. Oh, my, what wisdom. Oh, that is amazing. Wow. But there was no application. And that's what we do. Wow, that is amazing. What wisdom, what insight. Oh, what beauty, what grandeur. But it never becomes a living reality. There's something that we want more than anything else. Jesus has got to become something to you that you want more than anything else. Otherwise, everything that he said, you can't have. Jesus has got to become to you more important than any, everything else. Otherwise, all the blessings and all the promises and all the realms of faith that you hear about in the Bible, you'll never see a day of it. It won't be, there, won't be yours. It won't be yours. And I could just see Jesus turning now to Philip. Because all the other disciples had come to him, according to Mark chapter 6, and said, send them away now and turns to Philip and he says to Philip what should we do and he said to Philip what should we do to feed these people because he put them on trial and the scripture says to prove him epiazo in the Greek language in the Hebrew language language nasa a word that is used over and again and it's used to prove, to test, to tempt, to put on trial, to examine. We look over in James chapter 1 and verse 13. We discover that God does not tempt men. He says what happens is what's in man, what's really inside of man, what's in his heart is what tempts him. God places out. The opportunity. He places out the question. He examines the question. Look at what happened with Job. In Job chapter 42 and verse 2. As God was examining him. As God was proving him. Job immediately turns after the proof. And after the trial. And after the ex examination. And he says, oh God. Everything is possible with you. And no thought of anyone is hidden from you. Huh? He's now, he's got an insight, he's got an understanding of who God is and how big God is and what it is God can do. Watch what Philip did. Philip did is exactly what we do. Everybody who's still just basically ankle deep in the realms of God, who've not been willing to grow and mature, he did exactly what, he, 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 see, Philip wasn't in the expedited process yet. God sent the Holy Ghost to expedite the thing so that you could get it without having to wait 100 years or 940 years. So you could step in to the realm of the operation of revelation and insight that belongs to God so that you'd see things different, you would interact with things on a different basis. What does Philip do? He immediately gets the, the cash register out. He gets the computer out. He goes to calculating. Hmm. There is a total number of people divided by this number. Uh -huh. He said it's going to take 200 penny worth. What does he do? He, he forgets about the miracle power. He forgets about who Jesus is. He's still not there yet. God is showing what's inside of him. You want to know what's inside of you? Listen what comes out of your mouth under pressure. Listen what comes out of your mouth when those things are just freely flowing. When you're just processing and you don't know that anybody's examining you. You don't realize you're on trial. The lawyer didn't say, don't say nothing unless you're directly answering the question question and keep that short are you listening to me we need that one we need that counsel the Holy Ghost came to give us that counsel <laughs> just speak the word of God alone but we don't get it we immediately go and retire to what we can do who am I I have no value in who I'm who I am you need to no longer have value in who you are because for one reason, it will hinder you and limit you from valuing who he is and beginning then to move in the authority that he's giving you because he's not going to mix it with you. He's not going to mix it with you. See, he already knew what he was going to do. He asked him to put him on trial. He asked him to prove him. He asked him to examine him. He asked him for the purpose of, do you get it yet? He's already said, how long must I suffer you? How long must I put up with you? 
you know, in dealing with the, the, the provision of heaven on so many different levels. I mean, you know, the Lord, you say, well, he's a bit extreme. How does he possibly think that we're the ones that should command the wind and the waves? Nobody told us that we could command the wind and the waves. No, the Lord wanted to give you spirit, wisdom, and revelation. He now handpicked you to come and walk with him and be taught with him. Two years he's into this thing. And what's still coming out of him? 200 penny worth. Denarii. We already know what a denarii is because Matthew chapter 20 told us. A wage of a day was a denarii in the proverb, the parable, forgive me. So that's 200 days of wages, about eight months. Eight months for everybody just to have a little bite. That's why Philip's, look at Philip. Ah, oh, we're going to have 200. I don't know, maybe he knew what Judas, maybe he just had an accounting. with it. They just had a, a board meeting and had a financial report. I doubt it. Are you listening to me? I don't think Jesus one day ever made a decision on a financial report. I don't believe he ever got one. Oh, he didn't need one. Huh? We need finance. Go get a fish. Oh, hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. He, my, he lived in a realm where money did it master. You, can't, he, he, you know what? You can't serve two masters. You can't. Philip was still serving a master. That was greater than the master Jesus. He was, still, he was still locked down into an earthly realm. He couldn't look into the in unlimited supply of supernatural provision. He didn't get it yet. He wasn't there with Job. You can do anything. There is nothing impossible for you. He, he forgot one of the first miracles he saw was Jesus turn the water into wine in Canaan. All he would have to do is just remember, oh yeah. Canaan, water, wine, provision for all. He could have said, he, could have, he would have passed the test if he would have just said, Lord, you can do anything. You can call manna down out of heaven right now. You can rain bread down on these people. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. One guy, the first guy that showed up with Jesus, Andrew, is kind of a mild kind of, Meet guy, doesn't you don't really hear a lot about Andrew? He didn't get to go when Jesus was calling out three men of faith, Peter, James, and John. When Jesus was getting ready to do something great, Peter, James, and John didn't call Andrew, didn't call Philip. Called Peter, James, and John. Uh, and I tell you right now, if there's anything I, I don't want to be in the doubter section. Huh? I don't want to be in the weak faith section. I don't want to be in those boys are too scared to handle it yet. I don't want to be in that section. My goodness gracious. I'd be scrapping. I'd be scrapping in the sense of laying hold of the things, doing whatever it takes, scratching and clawing to be among the Peter, Peter, James, and John. But it's total abandonment. It's total, it's total abandonment. There's what it's going to be about. You're going to see a realm of faith. You're going to see a realm of trusting God. You're going to see a realm of moving with God. You're going to see a boldness and a confidence in Peter, James, and John that you're not going to see in anybody else. Are you listening to me? It's true. It's not like that, you know, Philip was singing all by himself. It, you, you know, you can't do it. Basically, that's what he's saying. He just saying it in a much more acceptable way. We need 200, we need 200 denarii. And then everybody's still not going to get satisfied. It's going to be just a little bite for everyone. Then you can see Jesus. He's, here's the problem. Jesus turned to him and said, what do you think? Watch out, people. Watch out because it's happening all the time. What do you think? Then all of a sudden you think you got to kick in and bring something to the program. That's where you blow it. You blow it. You fail the test. Over and again, we fail the test. Over and again, over and again, over and again. What's on the inside of us comes out under pressure. What's on the inside of us comes out in the most meaningful moments of examination. We're going to have to get what's on the inside of us right. And the only way that's going to happen is where you and I begin to obey God's word and get out of our own conversation. People always giving advice, human advice. People, those of you who give, have jobs giving human advice, you are in danger. Because now you get all built up. I mean, and of course, folks like psychologists, counselors, lawyers, physicians, other people constantly giving advice. You better watch out. You can easily stay over and live and build up within yourself the, 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 a sense of, of that you have something to give. And you give it out of that realm. 
Why don't you consecrate that over God to God the Holy Ghost and let him begin to speak through you? Why don't you forget all the things that men taught you and let God now begin to move you over into a direction of Holy Ghost counsel? What would happen if they could go to a lawyer or a counselor and get advice right from heaven instead of legal advice? Get advice right from the highest court. Somebody said it doesn't apply. Well, then if it doesn't, we need a revolution. <laughs> it does apply. It does apply. The truth always wins. The truth always wins. Ultimately, the truth always wins. It may take a little bit more time for the truth to be exposed, but truth always wins. What happens when the Lord comes to prove us? I've discovered that I'm on trial continually. That's why I've begun to take a hold of a place of relationship with the Lord where he's always before me. Why is he always before me? Because I place him there. People sit around, oh, I wish God was always before me. Just like pastor. No, it's you do that. Oh, pastor talks about river flowing out. I don't know what's wrong with me. That's exactly what's wrong with you. Your self-evaluation. You are the one who's going to allow. God's already said for it to be. Now you allow. It's, oh, God, let your river flow out of me. No, he's going, you let my river flow out of you. You let my glory flow out. You let my provision. You begin to take hold of the word. How can, a, how can a person cleanse themselves from the sins of their youth? It's never too late. God gives you a lifetime to get it right. He gives you a lifetime to repent. It's just the problem is the more you live in the cycle of yourself, the more you live obeying your own dictates, walking after your own mind and understanding, the more you solidify that state for the rest of your life. And how much can you live for yourself and make heaven? How much can you walk in your own way and make heaven? How much can you do it the way you believe it should be done and make heaven? How much can you live by your word more than you live by God's word and make heaven? How much can you walk in your spirit rather than walking under the rulership of his spirit and make heaven? How much can you rule your life Instead of letting Christ Jesus rule you. To say that he is Lord, people have just made a touchy-feely religious expression out of it. To say he is Lord is to say he's sovereign ruler. To say, oh, we would love to sing, oh, King of kings and Lord of lords. But are we, are, is it that we embraced it? It's a living reality because then it begins to become expressed in a different way. You see, when you consecrate it to him being King of kings and Lord of lords, and that's a reality to you. You begin to sing that. Something begins just the spirit of truth springs up on the inside. There is a witness. There's a testifying between your spirit and the spirit of the living God that what you're saying is true. <laughs> it becomes their spirit in life. It's not just dead, human, meaningless, valueless words. Words that are not true. Words that do not have application. You may mean to, I meant to, I believe most people in hell meant to do what's right. You meant to be a part of the program. You meant to apply these things in your life, but you never did it. The beautiful thing that we, we stand here in this place, of, of just have this an amazing supply from heaven. That God's standing ready to give us all strength and ability to do what he's asked us to do. He's not going to force it on us. It's a reciprocation of our heart. God, I want this. <laughs> Praise him for his mercy. You know. I mean, I, I'll, I, could, I could start right now and have a Holy Ghost breakdown to praise God for his mercy in my life. Why? Because I am a living recipient of it. It's real to me. It's real to me. Why is it real to me? It's real to me because I love his perfection. I love his ways. I want his stuff. I want to do what he said to do. And in that desperation for that, I need all kinds of mercy. I'm a benefactor for continually of God's mercy. Because the more I see, <laughs> it's like Job, you know, he, he thought he was way over there you know, very close to being like God. And then all of a sudden, you know, right there, 100%. Father said, my perfect upright man, he has an encounter. And all of a sudden, he's all the way back to, as it were, the beginning. 
I'm never speaking another word. I thought I was smart, but now I've come to realize how stupid I am. I thought I had insight, and now I've come to realize how foolish I am. I thought I could see, but now I realize how blind I am. Over and again, Isaiah, the same situation. Everybody who has a deeper encounter with God, a deeper encounter of God because there is a deeper consecration. There's a, willing, a willingness to take it deeper. There's a deeper obedience. It's not just being a hearer of the word. People think that they can come and just hear the word and go to a religious exercise and go to a religious service and somehow it's, that's okay. That's all God wanted. The Father wants demands change. He demands an instantaneous, miraculous change that only he can bring and then a consecration to walk in that change continually, growing every day, maturing, and being led by him as the sovereign Lord saying, Jesus, you reign. If you could just make him the king of kings and the Lord of lords. If you could just let him reign. If you just begin to allow him to be exalted. What happens is whatever's going on in your life and whatever is meaningful and whatever touches you deeply, you exalt that and you put it before you. And much of that is just tragedy. Much of it is negative. Men are so negative. You can have 99 good things going on and, you, and, and one bad thing. and the, the one bad thing eclipses the 99 things. This way men are. And it should be the other way around. And if you take heed to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, you'd totally change. You wouldn't be that way anymore. All you'd think about is what's true, what's pure, what's a good report. If it's positive, if it's got something valuable and meaningful and good in it. That's all you'd think about. There's too many good things to talk about instead of talk about the bad things. There's too many beautiful things to, 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 to fix yourself hard on, be fixated on instead of the ugly things. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? We got something we didn't deserve. We stole it. It's called the knowledge of good and evil. Huh? We got something within the realms of self. That our society and our culture has made us all little demigods. We always trying to prove who's smarter and talk about, oh, he's so smart. Oh, she's so smart. Get that. I was sitting in a meeting one day, and then they said, oh, Mark's, Pastor Mark's really smart. I said, please, give me a break, man. I'm really not that smart at all. Give me a test. I'll show you. Please. Please. That, that's the whole culture that we live in. I just, I, you know, I'm jack of all trades, master of none. I know a, lot about, I know a little about a lot of things. I mean, it's, it's meaningless to me. I'm, I'm sorry, it's so valuable to you. It's meaningless to me. God showed me how ugly, I got close enough to Jesus to see how ugly that is. I got close enough to his glory, close enough to his humility that I despise arrogance and pride. I despise it. I see the ugliness in it. I see the death in it and destruction of it. I see it as the source of everything that's going on that's bad. And I don't want to participate with bad. Huh. Come on now. God's come to teach us. He's come to prove us. He's going to talk to us. At least Philip got it. He's like, you know, he's encountering God. What are we going to do? Well, my idea is that I don't know how much Judas got over there in the bag. But if we got 200 denarii, we can go. And I don't even know if there's that much bread around, but let's just suppose there are. They're theorizing. Theoretically, if there is that much bread and somebody can go to town, which is pretty far off, and get back in time. You tell me you don't think like that, and I'll come over there and slap you. Because I'm going to tell you right now, it's the thing that every one of us, I mean, right to slap me. You know, it's a good thing. I'll spiritually slap you. I'm not trying to pick a fight with anybody. Oh, yeah? Okay, I'm just spiritually speaking. I'm going to come over there and get a hold of you, wake you up out of your sleep. Hello. This is the way we process. It shuts down the miracle. If the Lord was going to move based upon Philip's faith, forget about it. You wouldn't have 5,000 being fed with a few loaves and five loaves of barley and two, loaves of two, two small fishes. <laughs> At least Andrew is getting close. Andrew's warm. Andrew's warm. Hey, there's this guy, little guy. He's got a little, little guy's lunch. It's a little guy's lunch. These aren't big barley loaves. As some people want to describe, these were giant barley loaves. Back in those days... <laughs> The way the ovens were, they made these barley loaves that weighed 100 pounds each. No, this was in a little boy's lunch, right? So we got this. It's the small barley loaves, five of them. Jesus fish. Andrew's warm. 
He says, well, I got five barley loaves here from this little guy's lunch. And how he talked the little guy out of the lunch, he may have been out under the anointing, I don't know. But he, <laughs> with a few small fishes, but what are these among so many? But what are these? See, human calculation. The denarii, human calculation. What are we going to do? We'll get a second job. What are we going to do? Oh, I wish the pastor would thank you a little bit more about the money he's spending on and the budget. Why? Why, 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 did you, why does it matter to you? You know, why? Why? Who should, why should you care? Why should you even be burdened with it? You, you got enough concerns to deal with and to manage. Huh? The Lord spoke to me out of his word. God always speaks to me out of his word. God doesn't speak to me subjectively. He spoke to me out of his word and said, I'll set you in a large, large place. Look around. Look around. How much does it cost? If, if I'm moving on, how much does it cost? I'm never going to move very far. I'm never going to move out side of the human realm how much ability how much skill do you have to have if i look at my own ability my own skill i'm never going to move beyond that realm somebody says what are you capable of doing I, i'm going to try to define for them what i can do out of the out of my realm i know somebody was reading the daniel the other day a, a psychological description of who he is based upon a little test and they said about the certain skills and, and he was sitting by me when i was being read he said I'll be su successful at whatever I put my hand to do. You know, he's just, I can hear him, verses of Scripture, countering all these things. I'm not, I don't believe any of that stuff. To me, it's just like a joke. It's like a little joke. It's like a, you know what it's like? It's like those little Chinese cookies you pull out and says, everybody thinks that you're beautiful today, so act like it. <laughs> that's, that's about as much value. You don't want to get all excited. Woo, did you hear what they said about me? I'm rare. I'm rare, rare and brilliant and going to succeed. Goodness gracious. Calm down. Go read the Bible. Father's got something far better to say about you. Now there's going to be some things you're going to have to do. Because uh, otherwise all you're doing is getting something you, you don't have to labor for. You don't have to worry. This is just who you are. Look at your vested, how vested you are in who you are. I'm good. No, don't, don't. Don't go that route. Don't go that route because you might be good on the standards of men. And you might, you know, be successful because you're so good. But there's very few, I found very few billionaires. How many billionaires do we have here? So it's kind of hard to talk to billionaires because they are really wrapped up in themselves. Huh? Millionaires are getting really common, so I'm not asking for millionaires. And most of them, basically learn secrets of moving beyond what they have confined themselves mentally within the framework of what they believe mentally they can and cannot do. They were taught metaphysical skills, mental human skills, to say don't confine yourself, don't limit yourself. And they just had that kind of training, and then they began to move in that kind of, of just human, as it were, human confidence. And they've been very successful. Other people are just like, hey, you know what? Dad's a failure. Grandfather was a failure. Great-grandfather's a failure. I'm probably going to be a failure too. Oh, all I am is this thing or that thing. My, my uh, daughter-in-law's father is a very successful business attorney, real estate attorney. And... Uh, when he was giving a speech at, at my son's wedding, he's like, yeah, I'm just a garbage man. I don't even know how I got here. I'm here with all of these wonderful people, and I've spent my life being a garbage guy. And he says that because he was one of the most, he, he was one of the more significant lawyers. I mean, literally key lawyers. And I know they're probably watching right now, and he wouldn't, you know, want me to be saying all these things. But I just, I want to emphasize something about just a person, any, any individual. He's a key lawyer for waste management. And... Uh, has made him very successful. But he just found himself over here in this place of just talking about because being a garbage man. Kind of mind me to the embarrassment of Allie a little bit and some others. But you know what? It is a really, he, he just, somehow he's past all of that. He's past all, I'm needing people to say, you're okay, we like you, we approve of you. How much money do you have? 
kind of thing. There's a lot of folk, a lot of Christians are stuck there. Huh? Huh? It's like, the, you know, it's like the Baptist guy comes up to the Roman Catholic priest and says, do you think that any Roman Catholics are going to make heaven? He said, yeah, I see. he said, and there's a lot of Baptists that won't. Okay, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> then maybe they hit a little too close to home. Think any Roman guy should say it again. Maybe turn me up. Everybody's, I said too fast. The Baptist guy said, is there any Roman Catholics you think are going to make heaven? And he said, yes, and many of you Baptists won't. And it's important for us to stop pointing fingers at each other and start recognizing that there's some, demen there, there's some nature changes. There's some characteristic changes. God the Holy Ghost don't go around blowing his horn on all of his accomplishments and who he is. Who are you? Oh, I am a... And then people define themselves based upon what they do in this world. Nuts. That's the meaning and value of your life. It's not good for you. I could say easily, I'm glad I'm not you. And then I could also say equally, and I'm glad I'm not me. I've been given a gift and been given an opportunity to live in my life in Him. Who are you? You need to begin to value. What is it? When somebody says, who are you? Do you really know who you are? And how is it you're going to answer that? Well, I'm a Christian. What does that mean? What are you going to do with that? Can you draw off of that? How is that going to change your life? How valuable is it to be a, a son of God? I'm a son of God. I'm a child of the living God. Who are you? I'm an ambassador of heaven. Who are you? I'm, my, I'm a person who lives my life in Christ Jesus. I'm a person that's come to tell you about the kingdom of God. That's who, what do you do? Preach. That's not near, normally what you say. Oh, my, my, uh, my husband is like high and lifted up. And his, you know, my husband has, or because women do this. My husband. He's done this and that and the other thing, and he's, he's grand. He's <laughs> maj I mean, all these adjectives. And he's accomplished one and two. And my, my, my wife loves to just take stuff that has happened in my life, and she likes to put it like a little trophy up. And I'm like, baby, would you please, please don't do that. And no matter how many times I say, please don't do that. She still does it. Because that's just what we do. We've got to wean ourselves of this. We've got to be wanting to change here. You know? Philip, you know, Philip didn't drop his head after it was all over and go, I'm such a failure, I'm going home. <laughs> My idea was completely rejected. Jesus said, bring a few loaves and fishes here. And he broke them and gave them to the disciples and told the disciples, made the disciples part of the miracle. So that they could get it. Did they get it? Yes. No. <laughs> they still didn't get it. They still didn't get it. We don't really get to hear much about the apostles after the book of Acts. We get to hear just about a few. We get to hear about Peter. We get to hear about James in the book of Acts. A mention of John. Some people believe that Philip the Evangelist is Philip the Apostle. I, I don't really know for sure. There's no real evidence. I, he just called the Evangelist. Maybe. I don't know. Could be. He just He's not mentioned. Is that okay? That's perfectly all right. Did they fail? No. They just didn't get any, anything in there. God sent them elsewhere. God sent Mark down into Egypt. According to tradition, Thomas went into India. He just wasn't around. He wasn't under the, he, you know, he wasn't under the writing pen of Luke. Praise God for Luke. What did Luke get? Luke got to be in the number. That's what he got. He was probably one of the 70. Everybody had forsaken Paul. Who's still around? Luke. We don't get to hear about Luke's miracles and prophecies and how much he got to minister in the meeting. 
Huh? Paul said, everybody's forsaken me. The only person that's left is Luke. Luke's still here. Faithful Luke, taking care of Paul, ministering to his needs. There from the very beginning. What happens when God comes to prove you, to put you on trial, to find out who you are and what your complaints are and what you think you should have that you're not getting? How long are we going to be whiners and fussers and brats? How long are we going to live in human ability and doubt and unbelief and we're constantly, re you know, retreating to what we can do out of our own human efforts and human ability? How much do we t take a hold of, you want to be a leader in the church? Then you're a person who's going to train people how to move in faith. How to move in faith. Not how to move in doubt and unbelief and try to figure it all out and devise the circumstance and situation. Put all your smart matrix together. huh? Give all the pros and the cons. Look, there's plenty of people to do that. If you want to tell people about the pros and the cons, send them to an expert. You know what I'm saying? Just say, well, I'm not for, I can't give you pros and cons and tell you all the ifs and the ands and the insides and the outsides, but there's experts over there that can. I can tell you faith. I'll minister to you faith. I'll minister to you confidence in the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you whatever you put your hand to do, you'll prosper. I'm going to tell you when you begin to move in faith, it don't matter. Pick. Pick a, look, pick a number, win a prize. It don't even matter. Just whatever. Whatever. That's what God said. People always end indecision. God said whatever. Huh? Whatever you do will prosper. It's like win, pick a number and win a prize. People say, oh, God, show me, show me, show me. You need faith and start moving. You need to believe nothing's impossible with God. You need to get out of your intellect and now, come on. God will take the most ridiculous things, the things that people, everybody, all the experts will say won't work. And somebody takes another gift of faith, man, it's going to work. Why? Because the gift of faith is going to see Jesus doing it. It's going to remember what Jesus could do. It's going to remember that all things are possible with God. God can do everything and anything. And if I'm under his reign, and I'm under his rulership, and I'm moving with him, and it's for the purposes of the kingdom, my goodness, what is it going to look like? People have lost loved ones. They have circumstances in their home. They have circumstances in their job, and they allow it to overwhelm the heart. God can't get to faith ain't working there. Get to faith is not working in the midst of your doubt and unbelief and your worry and your concern and your confusion. You've got to come to a place where that is all gets set aside. And you set it aside as you worship him, as you just learn to love him, as you just learn to have a relationship with him, when he becomes a meaningful, valuable, very present God who's here right now. In time of need. And believe it or not, you always got one. Because of yourself, you could do nothing. These are just basic principles that will change your whole life. These are just basic principles, divine principles, spiritual laws, that if you become, if it becomes a bit in your mouth, if it becomes a means by which you move, it's a restraint. I'm under a restraining order, personally. The Holy Ghost has come and brought me under a restraining order. He has seized me. He's put me under a restraining order. Hallelujah. And as for me, and as for my house, I'm going to seize the one who seized me. And it's seizing him. That's not some religious activity of how much I, how much I use up the Kleenexes at the altar. It's how I begin to move in the authority which God has given. Huh? My mother used to tell me over and again, she got this through to me. She said, son, prayer is indeed the key to heaven. And I, and you know, it is. And, and I see that established in your life. But you've got to recognize faith unlocks the door. You can't just sit there and pray. Get up and move now. Do it. Do it now. Do it. Do it now. I want you to write a song for yourself. Do it. Do it now. Do it. Do it now. Huh? You still want to go swimming. Everybody's swimming. It looks like so much fun, but you don't swim yet. You're standing there on the dock. And the diving and everything looks good, and you still want to go in, but you're so afraid. And then you come up and you try to ask the little guy, what are you afraid of? 
they can't really put it into words. They want to do that. Do you want to swim? Yes. Do you, do you want to dive in? Yes. Well, do it. And this is, this is God's people. They're all standing on the dock looking at, and everybody's having fun out there. It's just like, They're in a diving position. They never dive. Oh, God, please cause me to swim. Oh, God, please. Well, you had to jump in. The place to be praying for God to cause you to swim is when you're in the water, not on the dock. Come on now. I pray in God in Jesus' name that everybody in this place that can get this will get it today. Amen. At some measure, you will get it today and start moving it in it. Oh, God. To begin to move in a faith realm. Do you know how much potential is in this place with respect to what God has given to each person who's been born of the Spirit? Do you know how much potential is here with this many people full of the Holy Ghost? Come on now. Get off the dock. Jump in. If I could, I would run up behind you. I'm saying all he goes, push them in. Please, just trip them, push them in something. Come on. I'd rather need to be saved by the lifeguard than to stay on the, on the dock. I'd just rather to go to somebody and say, listen, I'm too afraid of my own self. I'm not going to be able to do this. Please just grab me and throw me in. Just come to the pastor and say, look, I'm, I'm done. I can't get off the dock. Would you please just push me in? Don't matter how much I fight and scream and holler. Just please throw me in. I'm too paralyzed to move. But the Lord's not going to do it that way. So the Lord's here to prove you you're on trial. People think that they're going to just stand at the judgment seat of Christ one day, and that's it. No, we stand at the judgment seat of Christ right now. The Lord's here to prove you. He's put you on trial. What are you going to do? God speaks to things to your heart. You're going to wait for some other time? Don't wait for some other time. Start doing it now. Huh? I, I ministered two weeks. I sent a, a, a friend in ahead of me, and then I went in after... He was in for almost two weeks. I went in, I ministered a day, two days on faith. The kids from the Bible school, from the Presbyterian Bible school, from the Methodist Bible school, Assembly of God Bible school, they grabbed people, pulled them out of wheelchairs, and were dragging them across the stadium grounds. Huh? They, they jumped off the dock. They jumped off the dock. They just... Ignorant Nepalese kids who decided to follow Jesus. And, I, and once it was proved to them in the word that this is what they were supposed to do, they just did it. They just moved in it. What is it that God speaks to your heart? They just took it as, here's this guy has come from the Lord. All of our leaders says that this guy is sent, from, sent to this nation from the Lord. That's all they needed. My pastor said this man... The man of God sent to us from the Lord to tell us what the Lord wants us to do. I declared, here's what the Lord wants you to do. They went and did it, radically did it, and they got the results. Phoebe, I'm talking to you here now tonight, t today, this morning. I'll talk to you again t tonight, this day as a whole. I'm talking to you about you beginning to obey, not your word, his word, not your ideas, his ideas. Because if you're going to stand there at that crossroads and say, one day I'm going to make the switch. One day I'll do what Jesus said to do. One day I'll be an evangelist. One day I'll be a missionary. One day I'll be an ambassador. One day I'll begin to move out in faith and divine power and authority. One day I'll let Jesus Christ be the sovereign ruler over my life. And I'll only do what he says. And you know, I don't see, there's a, there's a few, there's like a couple of verses of scripture 
about your living room and your bedroom. Did you know that? The rest of them is go out. Isn't that true? Do you know what the word scripture is about your living room and your bedroom? Huh? You blessed when you lay down. You blessed when you get up. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's about it. The rest of it, get busy, get to work, go do these things, which I showed you to do. People, people stand around and talk about these works and greater works. Well, you're going to have to get into the works. You're going to have to begin and be op occupied with the works for there's going to be these works and greater works. Well, I laid my hands on someone and they didn't get healed. It's not your business. Go lay hands on somebody else. Go pray for them. Go to the next person. And then, and then go, go to your knees and begin to cry out to God for a greater manifest anointing. For, begin to cry out to God for a greater dimension of faith to flow through your life because you're not what are you doing you're striving for masters you want to be excellent you want to be perfect in these things you want to be everything that god's called you to be and you just got to get it busy huh what's the chief most important thing that god desires of us beyond just relate our personal relationship with him what's the most important thing god desires of us beyond our personal relationship with him what is the singular most important thing? Huh? Tell me, what is the most important thing? What is the most important thing beyond our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? What is the most important thing to him? Beyond, that's correct, but, but you got to put that a little bit more into. It's not faith. That's part of the relationship with the Lord. Beyond our relationship with him, the intimacy and relationship with him. What is the most important thing to him besides our relationship? Everybody's telling me these things that are all part of relationship with him. They're all good, but they're all just part of relationship with him. And a part of it, a reason that it's a little bit aloof to you is because it's not burning in your spirit like it should. Souls. The lost. That's what the whole Bible's about. Huh. Amen. Amen. The lost. The closer you are to him, the more relationship you have with him, the more you feel like he feels. Oh, and, and, and look, people, this is, our, this is our value and this is our means. So many people standing on the dock. Well, I don't know. They're going to get rejected. Yeah, it's because your life is wrapped up in you. Because what people think about you is so important. You don't have the abandonment. You're not liberated. You're still in a prison. You're not liberated from that prison of what everybody thinks about you. What they're going to think about you. you, you you're not loved. You're still, wondering whether, you're still wondering whether even the important people to you love you. Still wondering whether or not your mama loves you. Kind of thing. I mean, if there's anybody that should, everybody should know loves them is mama. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's something bigger than that. The love that God has for us. You get rooted and grounded now. When you get rooted and grounded and settled in love, I'm telling you right now, everything is available. People have had wrong models. They've had rejection. They've had hurts. They've had pains. They've had disappointments. They've had all kinds of relationship problems. And they can't get past it. They live in a prison. Today, Jesus Christ comes set you free from that prison. Why should you exalt those problems over your life and let them hold you in a prison? When all the time, God's standing there with what he feels and what he believes and what he's declared and his opportunity for you. I'm coming to prove you. You're on trial. So I say, you act like I'm on trial. Yeah, you are. We all are. I'm not on trial here. Yeah, you are. Yeah. We're, praying, we're saying, oh, Lord, let the bright light of your trying shine even brighter upon my soul today. Oh, sikara basitifiana. Today is a day of change. If you don't, if you've never come into a living relationship with Jesus, today is the day of your salvation. Today. Every yoke broken, every yoke Everything that has held you back, every problem, every hurt, every pain, every disappointment, every discouragement. 
Father will break those things off of you and you can begin to live out your life in his joy and his peace. You won't be screaming and yelling and upset and constantly in terror anymore. Hallelujah. Everything will be good and you'll be happy and you'll have friendly words, kind words to speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Loving words to speak. God empowers you and I to do something that without him we could never do. Deny ourselves. Otherwise we cling to ourselves. For me, it is a very clear witness of who's walking with him and who's not. I watch people clinging to themselves. There's all kinds of indicators. When I do marriage, when I used to do marriage counseling, I'd have trick questions. I don't do them anymore. I, let, I just tell people what my trick question is, and they all know that they would have answered wrongly, more than likely. Trick questions are questions that they're valuable, meaningful questions, and they come at you, and you don't really understand really the consequence of your answers. And so you just say freely what you're thinking. That's happening all the time, dear people. What we're saying, what we're expressing is declaring how much we cling to ourself and hold on to ourself and rely upon ourself. And that's all Philip was doing was clinging to himself and relying on himself. And he's got an opportunity. He's got an opportunity to help Jesus out. <laughs> the Lord's come to him for advice. And he's got an opportunity to weigh in. Gong. I hope you can hear the gong before you open your mouth every single time. <laughs> gong. And then you'll just. You can do anything. <laughs> All things are possible. I remember when you turned the water into wine. Wouldn't that have been amazing? Wouldn't that have been amazing if Philip could have just. I remember when you turned the water into wine. Can you hear me now? You want to start moving in faith? You got to remember that. You got to remember. Huh? Every great miracle that has ever happened in my life, through my life, I, it, when, the, when the pressure came in, I didn't start agreeing with the pressure and start getting, I sat down and I started remembering all the things that he did, how he got me from there to there, how he got me from there to here. Come on, just begin. Get wrapped up in this realm of heaven. Get wrapped up in the activity and ministry of Jesus. Get wrapped up in the realms of what God the Holy Ghost is doing. Everything will change. You decide right now, today. Don't live your own life anymore. Cease from your own works. All those things are empowering words. You no longer live, it's Christ. They're empowering words. <clears throat> People take them as sacrifice, something they gotta give up. God's empowering you. Lay down your life. Deny yourself. He's empowering you. You lose nothing, man. He wants to give you everything. He wants to show you this is how it's going to flow. This is how my glory flows through you. Your, your self expressions has got to cease before the river of God comes busting forth. Your unthankfulness, murmuring, complaining, doubt, value system based upon what you have and what's in this life, all of it negates the heavenly. Decide today. Don't delay anymore. God's come to prove you, test you, put you on trial. What will you believe? My goodness, when you begin to believe that he can do everything, and then you've got specific examples. I remember when you turned the water into wine. I remember when you spoke to the wind and the wave. I remember. When you cast out that devil out of that little boy. I remember. And I know right now, you do the same thing too. You do it. Whatever you ask the Father, he'll hear you and he'll do it. He didn't have to have the idea of a few loaves and a few fishes. All he had to have is the idea. You do the miracle. Father's asking him, what do you think we should do? He's asking me that all the time. It was a wonderful day. When I came to recognize his voice, oh, that's you. What should we do? Let's do miracles. You do the miracle, Father. What will you believe? 
I'll step onto that property over there. Geneva says, what do we tell them now? You tell them this. She come to me. She, good, I think Geneva, in many ways, she moves in the gift of faith more effectively than I do. But she's just so submitted. She's so connected with heaven. She's so connected. Why do, you, why do I tell them now? You tell them this. She went and tell them. I told them that, and this is what they said. What do I tell them now? Tell them this. Just to be connected. Oh, God. Quit doing it out of your own thinking. Quit doing it out of the framework of your own mind. Quit making yourself bigger than you are. Get into the body of Christ. Understand where the fountain of heaven, uh, where this wonderful grace of God's supply now flows. Who do you belong to? What company are you of? It's beautiful when God's people get connected and there's one head. I'm, listen to me, I'm going to say this because it's really hitting on me right now from heaven. I had a friend call me up just the other day. He's a wonderful man of God. God used him in great ways, wonderful ways. He says, Pastor, I need some wisdom. What should I do? You know what I immediately said? Lord, he's inquiring of you. Guess what? That's why he's successful in the ministry. Listen to me. That's why he's successful. I did the same thing. I did the same thing. I go to those who I am submitted to within the framework of who they are in God, that relationship. Here's what's going on. For many years, it was my dad as my father and as a minister of the gospel. And I, I, I didn't inquire so much of them as an individual. I was inquire, inquiring of the Lord and recognizing who they are in God. Hallelujah. Speak to me. What should I do? Where should we move? Here's what's going on. I got a list of people that I call up. When we're about to move out and do something, we're making decisions. Here's what's going on. What's in your heart? What's, let the Spirit of the Lord speak to you. What should we do? Oh, what, how, what a beautiful thing it is when God's people begin to move in the realms of His Word. Begin to move in the in divine reliance instead of self-reliance. God's dealing with you. God wants to show you self-reliance. For some of you, it's a small turn on the dial. Just a small turn. Some of you, it's 180 degrees. Some of you, just a total 180 degrees. Some of you have areas where it's just a small turn in the dial in terms of yielding to the Lord. Some of you have some areas that are 180 degrees where you still have a propensity just to... As soon as somebody asks, you're going, think, think, think. Calculator comes out, cash register, 200 denarii. Ching, ching, see, each, each piece of bread. You can see them, each piece of bread. 20,000 people, each piece of bread in one mound. Can you see that? Can you see that? Can, can you see that? I want you to see it. I want you to see it so you can not do it. I want you to say this with me. Say, Lord, we really don't get it. But we want to. We've learned self-reliance. And God, the biggest thing, this is one little change in the dial. One little change in the dial. Biggest thing is God says, stop your self-reliance. Some of the greatest preachers that I know on the planet today do not even don't know the word as well as the majority of people in here. And if when they go to when they're going to go preach, they they can't even sleep all night. They can't sleep. They tremble in his presence. But what happens is now God the Holy Ghost speaks to them thunderously. Knowledge will puff you up. Watch out. The knowledge will puff you up. You become so confident in yourself. Wow. Herod was so confident in his speech. He was a brilliant guy. Look at what he accomplished. Look at his engineering defeat, uh, feat, defeat, defeat, feats. And they were defeats. Look at his engineering feats. He's a brilliant guy. He's speaking, and one day he's giving a great speech. So 
puffed up with the skills of oration. The people said, this is not the voice of a man, but the voice of a God. What happened to him? It was worse than that. He started decaying before he ever went into the, de into the grave. That's how Father feels about our opinion. It really is nonsense. We don't get it. This, you know, the last time I was speaking to you, I was talking to you about the things that God, the Holy Spirit, has come to freely give to us so that we can freely flow in them and speak that what eyes not seen, ears not heard. The Lord's come to deliver these things to us, but we just shut off from receiving it because we're so caught up in the natural thinking. We want you to become people of the spirit, not people of the flesh anymore. There's a big difference. People of the Holy Ghost, not people of the human existence. All you, have, all you have to do is get hungry for these things. You have to decide. And if you're hungry, if you're hungry, and God looks into your life, and he proves you and says, that's true, you will immediately step over. And until he looks and sees that it's true, you will remain where you're at. It's between you and him. Are you listening to me? We're not waiting on God. Hello. Newsflash. I'm sending you a memo from heaven right now. And nobody here waiting on God. God's waiting on us. He's already freely given it. He's already poured out. He's already poured out. He's already poured out the supply of tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, these wonderful working opportunities of the Holy Ghost because He says, as surely as I live, my glory shall fill all the earth. And He wants His glory to be filled, revealed through you. Everybody stand with me. God wants His glory to be, say, God wants His glory to be filled through me. God wants His glory to be revealed through me. Now, here's what you do. You don't go, oh God, let your glory be revealed through me. He's, you know, I've watched the Lord look at me going, honestly, I've seen fathers, picture of father going, he still don't get it. He don't get it. One day I actually heard the Lord say, you're still too influenced by that. It was almost like I saw the Lord turn to others in heaven, just, yeah, Mark is still influenced by that stuff. Kind of walking away. When that happens, you say, ho! Oh, come back! Come back! I got it. I got it. I won't be with you. I'm staying with you. I want you to see these things. God wants to show you. Don't say, oh God, let your glory flow through me. You just need to start doing it, saying it like it's really true. God, I'm going to let your glory flow through me. Because that's what it's about. And now that's real. Lord, I'm going to allow your river to flow through me. <laughs> of, oh Lord, let your river. He's been letting. He hath led us already. He has let. It is supplied. Now you just start getting real with God. Father, I'm going to let your river flow through me from here on out. Papa, I'm going I'm to start saying what you, I'm going to start speaking your words. I'm going to start believing you for the results. I'm going to stop looking to my own arm of flesh. What does the scripture said about people who calculate 200 denarii? Huh? Cursed is the man who trusts in the arm of flesh. Now, how many of you want to be cursed for more, for some more? Nobody does. But it says you're standing on the dock. I'm telling you right now, you're standing on the dock. You're like this. And I would like to come back up behind you and push you in. Because it would be a wonderful day for all of us. I praise God for people's faithfulness kicking in just out of just faithfulness. Kicking in whatever human thing you, human, out of the realms of human ability you have to bring. But I really don't want that. I want you to be able to kick in the supply of the Spirit because then it's explosive. But you've got to have to dive in here. 
You had to get rid of your calculator. So just go home and burn the calculator. Go home, get smash, don't smash the TV, smash the cash register. Burn the boo, burn the boo, burn the boo, burn the boo. Somebody says, what's that? It's Caleb's little, look how big Caleb is. Caleb, wave at everybody. Caleb, we are so, are you Caleb over there? Ca Caleb, wave at everybody. This Caleb right here. He used to have this little night, this little blanket. And it went everywhere he went, and the thing was thrashed ugly bad. And I'm so glad that I don't look back there and see him with that blanket right now. And he didn't want to let go of it. And one day the guys got around him and started saying, burn the boo. We called it the boo. Burn the boo. Burn the boo. And he got carried away with it. They lit it on fire and it burned. And then after it was gone, he's like, ah, my boo. My boo is gone. And we're praising God that it's gone. And he feels liberated. And he feels blessed today because of that. We want you to burn the boo. We want you to burn the boo of self-reliance. Oh, we can't do that. Finance says we can't do that. No. Situation says we can't have that. The neurologist said you can't do that. The banker said you can't do that. The businessman said it won't work. Just let me just tell you, you put your trust and your reliance in the businessman. Let me just say this. You do what the businessman says means you have a testimony. Your trust and faith is in the businessman. You do what the, you do what the banker says, it's just proof. Your trust and reliance is in the banker man. Not in God. Just get, I want to just get it sorted out for you. Can you hear me? Should we turn me up? I wish I could turn me up. In the name of Jesus. I want you, there's been some people in this place, I want you to evaluate what makes you sad. There's some of you, some of you that, are, that you're young, you're not married yet. And, and you're sad a lot. Can you imagine a husband having to live with that? Or, huh? Or a wife having to live with that? It's bad enough that you have to live with it, and then you have to put it on somebody else. You want to get married? I pray you don't get married till you get right. You got to recognize what things, because that's that's what's Lord in your life. It's Lord in your life. It's Lord. It's ruler. It rules your emotions. It makes you sad instead of happy. It's ruler of your life. Say, I'm tired of letting other things be the ruler of my life. Say it. Say, I'm tired of letting other things be the ruler of my life. When God the Holy Ghost is ruler of your life, you can read the results you're going to get. It's a testimony. You on trial. Father's invited everybody in, but many people choose not to come on in. Father's invited this glory, everyone into this glory, but there's many people that don't want to step in this glory because they're allowing other things to rule them. Today, I'm, we're, we're crying out to you today. Mm. In Jesus' name. Come under the rule. Come under the rule. Come under the rule. Be a blessing to your wife. Be happy. Because you're under the rule of the Holy Ghost who only ministers happy. Be a blessing to your husband because you're full of faith. Because you've come under the rule of God who produces faith. Instead of the rule of self, which produces doubt. If you're going to be ruled by self, at least be confident. It, you could possibly mistake that for a witness and a testimony of someone born again. If you don't have discernment. But what Father, the light that Father wants to shine. Father wants to, a glorious light to shine. 
We used to sing a song, send the light, send the light, send the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. I'm concerned that the light is going out. The light of his glory, the light of faith, the light of his presence, the light of authority, the light of his anointing, the light of people who no longer, listen, if, if this much self's got a hold of you, it's going to block God. If this much finances rule your life, you're never going to move in faith. You're always going to be held back. I'm telling you. If this much realm of humanity rules your life, it's going to always stop the flow of God's divine provision. It's stepping over. It's, it's leaping off the dock of human reliance. Self-reliance. Let it happen now. Let it happen now. Let it happen now. It's a relationship with Jesus. It's nothing less. It's a relationship with Him. It's one of love. It's one of depth. It's one of glory. It's one when you begin to pray. He's talking. His, his talk is coming out your mouth when you're praying. Uh, revelation's coming to you as you pray because the Holy Spirit's speaking through you because it's a reality, divine hookup where the Spirit of the Lord rules your spirit. That rule, your spirit's what rules every part of your being. Today, with a hunger and a thirst after Him, a hunger and thirst after the things of the kingdom, I'm telling you, self-reliance will be no more. And when it rises up, and it does on a daily basis, for everyone who's already on this, everyone who's already well on this road. Self-reliance rises up. In other words, the alternatives and the options to do what one thinks is best to do. Doubts rise up. Fears rise up. It's just that you know how to pop them down as soon as they rise up. There's this little kid's game. They got this hammer. Huh? And these little, you know, ground squirrels pop up. And as soon as you pop up, you're supposed to smack them in the head and knock them down. That's us. That's me. Pop! You rise up. Pop! Right? Pop! And, and the quicker you get them down, the more points you get. <laughs> and the quicker it's down, the less influence it has. He came to prove him and when he proved him, he discovered, it's revealed to everybody present, including God, that Philip was still walking after his own logics, his own imagination. Your own imaginations will cause you to forget about the water turned to wine, will cause you to forget about every miracle, will cause you to forget about every great sign and wonder, everything Father did. People, I want you to get to a place here that you don't need water, you don't need food, you don't need clothing, you don't need all these stuff, just things to sati satiate your body and your own self-interest. All you want is heaven. Because then, at that juncture, all that's going to be released through your life is heaven. And that's what it's all about. It's not about getting in a prayer line and having somebody else, because everybody wants to lay hands. It's amazing. Everywhere I see, people want to lay hands on people and get them to fall down. And honestly, it grieves me. I mean, just, not, you know, it's, it's about the anointing. It's about the transference of the anointing. It's about the power of God. It's not about, hey, people falling down under my ministry. Or are they getting up under your ministry? Is anybody doing anything under your ministry? Are souls being reached? Are people going into a relationship? Because if people go into a relationship, they're going to have faith. Miracle faith is going to produce the results of God's purpose. Souls coming into the kingdom. Nations being touched by the power of God. We want you to understand who God has called you to be and you step into your place in Him today.
God's calling you. He's calling you. God's calling you. He's reaching his hand out to you right now. He's saying, come walk with me in this company. His father's reaching out to you. You're, you're going to have to leave your problems and your troubles behind. You're going to have to step out of the realm of the things that has confined you. Some of you are just confined. You're just, you're just you're confined to the realm of circumstances, relationship problems, financial problems, emotional problems, discouragement problems, failure problems. The Holy Spirit just working and moving right now to show you Jesus with his arms wide open, beckoning for you to come. Say, come walk on in here. Come on into this place. But you can't bring all your stuff with you. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that there would not be a single soul in this place that would allow anything other than the Holy Spirit to rule over them. And I want to pray for you. You know, I'm talking to you, you know it. Where you're allowing emotions, unholy emotions to rule over you. If it's nothing but depression and sorrow and sadness and fear. And you've got to be able to hook up with the divine power and strength that is going to change that. And we have that. What we have, we can give. We declare the word to you. We'll break off the strongholds of Satan, the oppression of darkness, the oppression of self-interest that is, that is under the influence, not of, not of you, but of the power of darkness. Because there is a self-interest that you're going to be, you the one, you decide what's going to happen with you. What are you going to do with yourself? You're going to be happy, you're going to be sad. In other words, you're going to be confident, you're going to be insecure. You're going to be bold. Or are you going to be intimidated? Can't do anything with a timid thing. Can't do anything. Won't work. Just going to lay there. The Holy Spirit is here to answer your call. What do you want? You name it. What do you want? Name it. What do you want? Name it. I want you to come right now. The Lord, Holy Spirit speaking with you. I want you to come. I want you to come because, because the Lord wants you to name it. I want you to come. I want you to come because the Lord wants you to name it. I want you to come right now. The Lord wants you to name it. I don't want you to stand back in doubt. The Lord is the supplier of your need. When it becomes obvious to you, sorrow's been ruling my heart. Doubt's been ruling my heart. Fear's been ruling my heart. Some of you, condemnation's been ruling my heart. Self-reliance's been ruling my heart. You name it before him and say, Lord, I don't want this in my life anymore. Holy Spirit, I want you to show me right now how to yield myself to you. Oh God. I want you to show me right now how to move with you. Come fill me with that, what, that supply of your spirit. I'm, I'm not letting sorrow rule me anymore. I'm going to let only joy. I'm going to recognize sorrow. I'm not going to let Melancholy rule my life. Fear, disposition of fear rule my life. Complaint rule my life. If I could get everybody in this place to just simply say, from this day forward, I'm going to obey God and do what Philippians 4, 8 says from here on out. If you just name that. You can go to my wife right now and ask her what Philippians 4, 8 says, and she'll tell you. 
But most people in this place probably don't even know what Philippians 4, 8 says. Can't quote it. Because it's not that real yet. It's not that meaningful yet. Because you've not applied the word. Even preachers. Many preachers, the only time they really study the word is preparing a sermon. It's not about application to their life. But today, in Jesus' name, you standing up here today, those of you who have come, you've not come to me. You've not come to men. It's not been about whether you thought these things about yourself or not. It's just about you want, you're hungry for God and you've come to God and He's, come, and he's here to supply your need. I guarantee you right now, as surely as I'm alive, as surely as Christ Jesus is Lord and Savior, as surely as God is alive, He's here right now. As surely as you are alive. For those of you willing, come stand up here in this place. Oh. Barasti rimata. Because you've grown tired of yourself. You come to the place that you said, I'm fed up with me. You've grown tired of yourself. Because you're never going to deny yourself until you grow tired of yourself. Self will dominate you. Self will rule you. There'll never be a connectivity. It always, you'll always, you create disconnection, says the Lord. No one else. You create it for yourself because of wrong attitudes. Because of self-reliance. And when you disconnect from that which Christ Jesus has supplied through the ministry of the Spirit by His church, you're on your own. If you feel disconnected today, just understand this. You disconnected yourself, no one else. I have people say, I just don't feel connected. It's nothing to do with me. I'm very connected. It has to do with you. There's a change then. You say, oh, I just got revelation. I feel disconnected because I'm not willing to connect. And I don't want that anymore. I'm not willing to submit. I'm not willing to come under the authority. Or I'm not, or I've let fear and intimidation hold me back because, because, because it could be many different reasons. All you have to do is say, no more am I going to allow this anymore. It's just a small adjustment. God, just, it's just, it's just a, for most of you, it's just a very small adjustment. Because you, you were in the right place. You're reading the right Bible. Huh? You under the influence of the right anointing, now all you could just make a small adjustment. So okay, I'm going to do this now. Now, let me just say how practical this is for everyone. And I'm going to use sadness and sorrow for those of you who walk around looking like that somebody died continually. Literally. You look like you've got the... Some of you have this look on your face like you've got the worst... You live under the worst news. And it's not just occasionally. It's just there. You have to decide it's not going to be there anymore. If you have to walk around with both hands or tickling yourself or reading something good, reading something funny, I mean, that'd be pretty ridiculous, wouldn't it? But whatever it takes. Telling yourself jokes continually. Obviously, that's not what that's not the results we want, but I mean, I might, whatever it takes. Because you've got the greatest impact is the Holy Ghost, but if you're stuck in the natural, only thing that's going to make you happy is a joke. Just tell your, make, make nice things up about yourself. Everybody thinks you're beautiful. Everybody thinks you're wonderful. Whatever, whatever it is. Because then you're going to start parsing this out. You're going to start understanding whether you're influenced by natural things or whether you're influenced by heavenly things. You've got you to sort it out. If you don't sort it out. Huh? It's like a person said to me, I don't know what's wrong. I, I'm sorry I have to get up, go to the restroom so much. And during the meeting, I'm so sorry. Well, you know what? If you wouldn't drink three bottles of water during the meeting, you wouldn't have to be sorry. 
because actually it had nothing to do with anything other than a choice that you were making throughout the whole meeting. I watched one bottle go down, then I watched the second bottle go down. And guess what? When you drink water, there's going to have to be a result. There's a consequence. This is, it's got people, I wanted to get, I want this thing, to, I want this to get simple for you. I wanted this to get real for you. These are choices you are making. God's made the choice. He invited you into a supernatural realm of divine power and authority. We make choices every day to walk in a natural realm. God's invited us into this place, a divine power and grace. You choose, lay hold, lay hold on this life. Lay hold on these things, and they're yours. Let God rule you. Let his word rule you. I have you standing up here right now by the Spirit of the Lord for the single purpose of you participating and engaging and telling God exactly what it is. Lord, I will no longer be ruled by intimidation. Lord, I will no longer be ruled by doubt. Oh, God, I no longer be... Oh, somebody said, well, I'm not really ruled. I'm influenced. Give me a break. Stop talking about shades of darkness. Just come on into the light. Goodness gracious. Split a hair down the middle. Influence, as far as I'm concerned, is ruled. And as far as God's concerned, it's ruled. Fathers, take us into the place of being ruled by compassion, ruled by love, ruled by joy, ruled by peace, ruled by goodness, ruled by faith. Ruled. Ruled. Ruled by miracle, ruled by signs, ruled by wonders, ruled by heaven, ruled by the reality of his presence. God can do anything. Christ Jesus is here. A friend of mine, a friend of mine, God used to do great miracles on a mass scale. One day I called him up and I was getting ready to go to a place and I said, Give me one word, give me one word from heaven. Just, I want one word from heaven. I had called up my list. Give me one word from heaven right now. I was pulling on the anointing. I was asking some of you, you've got to understand, I'm not in that realm anymore. I'm not in, you know, who's the smartest anymore. We've done with that. When we were like children, we spake like children. We put away childish things. Give me one word from heaven. The one word was, don't forget the God factor. Just understand Recognize he's with you. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. He's right there. He may look at you and say, what should we do? And if you don't know of anything else, just turn back to him, whatever you think, whatever you want. I'm with you. What do you think you should do? <laughs> Let him give the answers. Don't give any answers. Never give any answers. I was put on a board, uh, the Back to Jerusalem board, with a bunch of... Uh, elderly Chinese men who were always asking my opinion and I recognized from the very first these guys are already smarter than I am I'm not saying nothing I'm gonna sit here until you give me something to say Lord you give me something to say I know it's right for me but I'm gonna say but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give any of my I'm not spinning any of my opinion the Lord used that situation with in my life to recognize how much more he already knows and he's already got the answer. And he doesn't need my opinion. What do you think we should do? Oh, God. We're always telling God, oh, God, you need to do this. Oh, God, you need to do that. Oh, God, why aren't you doing this? Oh, God, why am I in this situation yet? Huh? Oh, God, why is this happening to me? All these things. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's just doubt and unbelief. And Father's never going to hook up with it. You need to start praising him. Start giving him thanks. Start telling him who he is. Start do stapadanea. Get over into the realms of where he operates and where he functions. Stop living in the problem. Start living in the answer. Stop living in the circumstance. Start living in the provision. In the name of Jesus, start li stop living in the doubt. Start living in the faith. Stop living in the natural. Start living in the spirit. Stop living in the darkness. Come on over into the light. Start living. Uh, stop, stop living defeated. Start living undefeated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop living in the lack. Start living in the provision. Stop living in the depression. Start living in the joy. <laughs> Stop living in the division. Start living in the unity. Stop living disconnected. Start living connected. 
Now, right now, now, not later, not someday when you get stronger. Now, it's a miraculous, supernatural provision that supplies to you whatever you need of. Right now, lay hold on it. Right now, take it. Right now, take it. It's just so simple. It's so simple, you immediately change your attitude right now. If you're frowning, smile. You, that's, how, that's, how you, that's how you take it. You don't have to fall down on the ground and shake for five minutes to take it. <laughs> All you have to do is just take a hold of the supply of the Spirit, and it's yours. Hey, can you imagine this? Can you imagine we're going to have a song service? And now nobody's going to sing until God does something. Everybody's standing there. Why don't you guys want to sing? We're waiting for God to do something. He's waiting for you to open your mouth and start saying the yes. words. Yes. We're waiting to feel the presence. Of the Lord. Start saying the words and you'll start saying the feeling the presence of the Lord. Start doing what God's giving you to do. Stop living under that influence that's influencing you. Stop it. You no look. God's called you out of darkness into his light. You no more are no longer under the under the authority and dominion of sin and death. You're under his authority. In other words, there's nothing that can stop you. There's nothing that can prevent you. God's empowered you. There's no way that you have to live in a place where Satan's dictating to you, circumstances are dictating to you. You've been liberated. You've been set free primarily. That's what salvation has done for you and me. Liberated us so that we can now participate with God, not be sad and sorrowful and sick anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pasta Gadene a piacy to talk. Lambrongje. Lambrong. Just let your hands towards heaven and come by and we lay hands on you. Because we're hooking up with faith with you that the supply of the Spirit will be yours. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, living. Talk, right, just receive right now. As I come by, just receive. Just take hold of what God has for you. Hallelujah. That's it. Hallelujah. Monday, <laughs> super. Some people, some people are saying 200 denarii, and others are just saying you can do anything. Huh? And I can feel it. I can feel it. I don't care about people falling down. I'm just interested in the transference of the anointing. Hallelujah. Basare. Bondo. Bondo. Bayasai. Bangale. Bondo de Rasus. Bondo de. Dande, stay right time. Received? Receive right now. Receive right now. Take it. These are yours. These things are yours. There it is. Here it is. Ha 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 Say ha ha. Say ha. Le day. Le ben brusacara de pratisi. Just live in the joy. Live in the joy. Live in the joy and the celebration. Live in the love and live in the compassion. Let the Lord fill you up because he's, he's got plenty of supply for you. He's got everything that you need. But you have to forsake your thoughts. You have to forsake your own thoughts. You don't forsake your own thoughts. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break the power of this demonic oppression off of you in Jesus' name. This lying influence of hell. No more. In Jesus' name. Come rule. Come rule. Come rule, Lord Jesus. Come rule. Come rule. Come rule, Lord Jesus. Estai. Estepirene. Estepirene. Huh? What is it that you don't want in your life anymore? Huh? What is it? Okay. Okay. Sutanea. Sutanea. But then don't give place to it. Don't give place to it. Begin to live by the word. Because if you don't have the supply from heaven that displaces the problem, you know where to go. So the Lord says, faith works by love. That's what Papa says. That's what Father says. 
Did you know there's plenty of faith in the house? Right here. Did you know that? But if you're not connected with it, you're going to get anything from it. You won't profit from it. Huh? It, 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 it's the same way. There's plenty of water in the city. There's a, whole, there's a whole water division in the city. But if you're not connected to the water line, you're sitting in your house with dry. Because you're not connected. You've been hooked up. Some people didn't put any pipes in. <laughs> so it's not just an easy, oh, I'll fix that right here. Here we go. We've got a junction box. We got a, Okay, you got it. Bang, pressure. Wow. Water pressure. Woo. We're showering now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Everybody's happy too. Besides you. And then suddenly we discovered that even having pipes. We got to go to work. That's the new birth. The pipes are there. Some people just aren't hooked up. The Lord hook you up. The Lord hooks you up in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this blessing upon this life. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, that your daughter's going from glory to glory, that faith is ever increasing in her life, and that every good thing that you purpose for her life is going to be that which she now possesses. There's not going to be any more stealing and killing and destroying, Lord, because of this wonderful gift that you've given to us when we just open up a hard little bit where we just trust you and allow you to be our provider. Hallelujah. Our protector. In Jesus' name, I command you to receive.